Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, so today we're back to work over here on the Lucas Model 31 horizontal boring mill. This machine dates back to, I think it was 1917, 1918, somewhere in that time period. I've had this machine in the shop now for a couple of years and I've been slowly working on getting it restored and uh, getting it re-scraped in. When we got it, uh, the, the ways on the, the top here were pretty worn. There was a pretty good dip down on this end of the table, as you would kind of expect. And uh, over time, we have been slowly working on getting this machine uh, trued back up, scraped back out, and uh, other things done to it as well. So um, before we get started, it has been a while since we've worked on this project, so I wanted to kind of bring you up to speed on what all we've done. And we've got videos where we've done this work if you're interested in going back and watching it. But uh, just looking at the ways here, we have a uh, box ways on this, flat tops, you know, on the sides here, the, the saddle will move back and forth on this. And then there's a table on top of that. In fact, this is the table right here uh, that will move in and out. Um, and again, there was a good bit of wear on here. Now, to get this kind of back into spec, what we want to do is get the, the tops of these ways flat in a plane and, uh, you know, also in alignment with the head. Now, what I kind of did to, to, as a starting point on this is we, we came in here and measured the thickness of this way because this way, when it was... When it was originally machined, it was machined on both the top and the bottom. The top is a wear surface. The bottom, there's just kind of a piece that kind of fits up underneath here. And if for some reason it ever picks up, it'll catch, but it's not a wear surface. Now, I'm not going to say there's absolutely no wear in this bottom, but there's very little wear in here. So we were able to measure the thickness through here, and that was able to give us a good indication of how much wear. I don't remember the numbers, but there was a lot of wear again, particularly down here on this end where most of the work took place. Now, through a lot of hand scraping, power scraping, etc., I got these ways down to where they basically were measuring the same on both sides. Had a lot of material to take off on this end to kind of get this uh, scoop out of the, this side, uh, but we got it done. I used a long eight foot straight edge and made sure that we were in a plane from one end to the other. So not only was the thickness proper from on both sides, but we also um, measured, make sure that it was flat from end to end. And we did that on both sides. Now where I'm at is uh, I need to compare the front way to the back way. And to do that, I'm going to basically take the table that we've had reground. I had this sent off to a Kinetic. Uh, up in uh, the Milwaukee, Wisconsin area, a grind shop up there that I've worked with in the past. They do a really, really good job on uh, machinery grinding. They reground this table. They reground the ways. I got it upside down right now, so these are the ways that will ride on the saddle. And then they also ground the top flat. Uh, I then took the top of this, and you can't see it right now, but we scraped it in over on my surface plate to make sure that we had a really good surface and it was crowned almost perfectly. So uh, basically we just scraped the surface, broke the surface up and checked it and everything was good there. We're gonna use this table now as a reference surface. You could think of it as a surface plate and we're gonna basically bring it over here and let it bridge across the front way to the back way and my goal here is, is I want to make sure, you know, I know that these are flat from end to end. Uh, and I know, well, I, I, I feel like based off the thicknesses that they should pretty much, you know, the, the two ways be in alignment with one another. But by taking the table here and putting on here and bluing this up, we can see, are they in alignment in this direction? You know, is one going up more down over the length? Uh, but we'll be basically printing the whole area. Now, obviously, our table is not as long as the whole thing. Ideally, you would do just one print on this. Um, I'm probably going to do it in, well, I am going to do it in three prints. Now, the reality is, is that the table 
you can you know do the two ends, but I also want to you know, gap the center here. So uh, I feel like we can get a good representation. I'm going to be bluing this up, making sure that everything is in planes where this this the top of this plane of this way is in the exact same plane as this one. That's that's kind of the goal here now, and that's the next step of where we're at. So we just did a lot of talking. Uh, what we're going to do next is come in here. Uh, I'm going to blue up the bottom of this. We're going to print the uh, the ways and uh, start evaluating what needs to be done next from a scraping standpoint to get this uh, thing get this uh, moved on to the next step, and where hopefully we can soon kind of wrap up the scraping and start putting it back together. All right, let's get to work. So I'm just getting my bluing here. I'm using this Canode uh, 2243 dye spotting blue. Unfortunately, the stuff isn't available anymore, but I've still got a little bit of it and it works pretty good. I just got a little paint tray, a little paint roller, and we're just gonna go take and transfer this and just put it all over the uh, uh, the the table over here. It's going to take probably a good bit of ink to get it glued up good. Uh, and then we'll use that to transfer over. We'll do it just like we were bluing up a surface plate. All right, let's transfer some blue over to this uh, plate. I'm going to have to put a good bit on here. All the idea here with this bluing is I want to just get a nice thin layer on here. And uh, because this table has been ground and scraped flat, it basically becomes my reference surface. And uh, what will happen is, is the ink will transfer to the high spots on the table here and tell me Give me an idea of how this uh, the ways are in alignment with one another. We'll be able to see that once we print it. I'm going to lower this down a bit closer to the ways. Lower this down onto the ways now. Very good. And now we're going to move this around a little bit. We'll transfer the blue from the plate to the table. Hopefully. And now I'm going to pick it up. We'll move it down, print it again more in the middle here. Well, let's take a look at what we got. Um, you know, this isn't terrible. It's not perfect. If we need a little bit of work, but all in all, I'm pretty happy with what we're I'm seeing in general. So first off, we've got bluing from one end to the other. Now we've got really a nice pattern here in the middle, kind of on this front way from about here to here, it looks great. About here to here, it looks great. Um, you know, so this the, the front way, I'm pretty happy with all except down here at the end. In the end, uh, it's hitting on both sides, but it's a little bit low in the middle, so we're going to need to knock some of that down. On the back way, like I said, we look really good from here to here. On the front, I got good contact, but a little bit weak on the back side. Uh, it almost looks like this side maybe had a little twist in it. Um, you get down on the end, and we're making contact all along this outer edge, but the inside is low on this side. so. Game plan, we're going to come in here and basically we're going to scrape all the areas that have blue on them and uh, lower those down just a little bit. We'll come in here, we'll uh, 
blew it up again and check it again and, and we're just going to try to get decent coverage from one side to the other i would love for it to kind of look like it does from here to here you know over the whole pattern that's kind of the game plan uh, i don't think it's going to take a whole lot to get there but because of the size it's going to be a lot of scraping but in the grand scheme of things we're not that far out it looks pretty good all right guys we're going to come in here and knock off this blue area with the power scraper <laughs> of scraping done here I'm going to come in here and clean up any remaining blue that might still be on these ways just use some Windex and a paper towel here to get that cleaned up um, I'm ready to start printing this again all we did is uh, just went in there and hit those areas that were blue yeah, I hit them fairly hard. Um, you know, we've got a, we're not that far out, but we've, we've got a little ways to drop things down. Next thing I'll do is come in here with these stones. I'm just removing any burrs on here that uh, the scraping might have brought up so that we've got a nice flat surface that to run over with the, uh, the plate. All right, second print. I'm sitting here just going to take a quick look. And um, similar pattern to the last time. I can kind of tell where my scrape marks were the last time. But overall, I'm seeing a lot more blue in here than I did on the last print. So that did tell me that we are dropping things down. Uh, still got a couple of weak spots in here. Primarily kind of right in here, although we picked up a lot of print here. And generally speaking, this back end of the table still uh, is a little bit on the low side. So as we drop this end down, uh, we are picking up contact, but it's just kind of on the edges. So uh, not going to do a whole lot of scraping up in here, but need to kind of get these areas down a little bit more. But um, I like this. We are making progress, so we're going to make get the scraper out, make a second pass, and uh, see what kind of difference it makes on the next print. All right, we are scraping again the high points here. I'm hitting the areas where we have the blue, kind of bringing those high points down ever so slightly. We're only scraping off probably a four or five ten thousandths of an inch here very small amount. Notice that uh, I'm going perpendicular 90 degrees to the uh, last pass. What that does is it kind of instead of just digging a hole deeper and deeper I'm scraping across the previous scrape marks and it kind of creates a checkerboard type effect. And what we're going for with scraping here is these individual points of contact which are represented by these little blue spots on here. That's the, the hot spot that is making contact to the uh, mating part. And with scraping, we would much rather have a bunch of individual points of contact that are all flat in a plane rather than having a solid plane like a ground surface. You have too much contact uh, with a perfectly ground surface. With this scrape surface, you break that pattern up have those individual points of contact and as far as sliding waves go it gives the oil a place to go you don't have as much friction because you've got only these individual points of contact and the surface will wear much slower and much more evenly over time uh, when you have these individual points of contact rather than a, a perfectly flat plane like a ground surface. So that's what we're going after, slowly bringing these down, 
bringing the high points down until we get good coverage from one end to the other. We'll keep on scraping until we get there. Well guys, I think I'm going to call this uh, good enough. It took me a total of six passes uh, that I had to make, but I'm really happy with what I got here. And uh, this has got this is going to be more than adequate for what we need. Feel real good with it. So let me, uh, I'm going to take you down and kind of show you the, the whole length here so you can kind of see what we got. Uh, but like I said, I think we're going to call this. So you can take a look here from front to back. We got pretty good coverage going on. I'm real happy with how this looks all the way down. Got to remember that the uh, saddle that's going to be rolling on here, the uh, it's two feet, so we got a lot of surface area from one side to the other, but uh, you can see good points of contact from front to back, and uh, it's pretty fairly uniform all the way down. Uh, even when you get out here to the very end of the table, uh, you know, maybe just a little bit lighter, but still, still more than adequate. So uh, I'm real happy with what we got. This is going to hold up fine. Before I call this thing 100% done, I do want to come in with my long straight edge and I want to blue this thing up from end to end. You know, with the table, we were really kind of confirming from one side to the other to make sure everything was in alignment across that way. But it was only able to print about half of the table at any given place because of the length. Um, I printed it kind of in three sections but I want to do one over the entire length and just make sure that there's not anything funky going on that we missed by having to print that in three different prints. So I'm going to go ahead and do both of the, both of these ways and just make sure that they look good from end to end. And if they are, we're probably going to be in good shape here. And I'm hoping that we will be here. So let's go ahead and, I've already put blue on the bottom of this uh, straight edge and uh, we'll just transfer it over and check it out. And the results of the long straight edge, I think we got good contact. I'm very happy with that. That almost looks better than the uh, uh, across all the ways. So um, I think we're good in pretty much both directions here. Um, there is one more measurement I want to make. I want to measure the thickness of this uh, from end to end. Uh, just be kind of a comparison and just make sure that we're going back again off this original surface. And as long as we are, you know, fairly close to having the same measurement from end to end on both sides, uh, that should mean that we're, you know, at least back to the original plane that this thing was machined in and it should be close. So. Uh, one more check, and uh, I think we're going to be able to call this done, assuming it, it checks out. So I've got a micrometer, and I've got a um, gauge uh, block here. This is just kind of giving me an average height across the top of those scrape marks. And what we'll do is we're just going to come in here and measure the thickness. And when this machine was originally made, the... Um, top and the bottom edge here were both machined in the same operation. So they should be parallel. So what I'm basically checking is to see how much of this plane is into the original plane here. And, you know, common sense tells you unless something really bad happened to this machine, that they should still be in pretty good relationship. This is just a comparative measurement. I'm just kind of looking at how they compare from one and the other. The actual measurement is kind of irrelevant. I just want to know what the difference between the, the, the high maximum thickness and the minimum thickness is. And that should give me a good idea. So, uh, all right, we're on about seven, just a little over seven thousandths, whatever, whatever it is. I'm not even reading the whole measurement, uh, but you know, that'll give me an idea. That's still about seven and a half. And I'm just going to kind of roll down through here from one end to the other and just kind of see how close all these are. Well, on the front way, 
Okay, this measurement's measuring very similar. So on the front way, about the maximum variation that I had was about a thou, maybe thou and a half. Um, I'm not sitting here reading these thing out to the ten thousandths, but I'm just kind of getting a quick look. And this side here is reading almost identical to the other side, which is good. And uh, it's telling me that we're probably going to be in good shape here. So a good sign. And continue on down through here. Yep. I'm just kind of picking random places. And let's see where this one checks out. Yeah, so it looks like I'm just going to say a thou and a half variation in this thickness. Now, keep in mind that uh, while this bottom ledge on this, this is not a really what I would call a wear surface, um, it's not perfect. In fact, I can run my hand up underneath there and feel a little bit of roughness in it. So a uh, bow and a half, that's probably pretty darn good. So uh, I'm happy with that as well. And that tells me that we've got the, the, this thing pretty much very close to where it was when, at the factory when it was built, uh, which uh, should, be, should be good enough. So using my measurements that we've done so far, going across there with the table, using the long straight edge and measuring the thicknesses here, you know, for a hundred year old machine, I think we're in excellent, excellent shape. We're definitely miles ahead of where we were when we started on this project. So uh, it's gonna be, it's gonna be good enough. Uh, very, probably better than it was when it was new, to be honest with you. So um, let's, uh, let's move on. Well, I don't know what else to check. I mean, I think that we're in good shape. And uh, like I just got through saying, I mean, I think that we're probably as good, if not better than this machine was when it was made new. You gotta remember that when this machine was built back around 1917, uh, 1918, I don't remember the exact year, but well over a hundred years ago, the ways on this machine were never actually scraped. They were just, they came right off a metal planer which is, should have been pretty darn flat, uh, but uh, it was never actually scraped. So I feel like that we're probably exceeding the tolerances that was probably on this machine when it was new, uh, which is a, a good sign to me. And with such large areas that we're making contact, like I said, it's about a two foot area here on both the saddles that's making contact, we're gonna be in great shape. So I'm very happy with where we're at. And uh, glad to get this checked off the list where we can move forward in getting this uh, machine back in operation. What's next? Next, we're going to be getting the saddle back over here, mounted on here. Uh, I've already done the scraping on that. I've got the top scraped in flat. I got the bottom scraped in pretty parallel. We did videos on that. It's been quite a while now. Uh, I am going to put turkite on the, the bottom of the ways, so basically the, the surfaces will ride on the top of these ways, mainly because over the years of wear, as well as um, the scraping that we did, we've been lowering all this down, and we do have some rods that go through here, and to kind of get them back in alignment, we're gonna need to raise it back up a little bit, and I'm gonna be doing some measurements later on to determine how high we need to do that. But when we put that turkite in there, that will raise that back up, get everything back in alignment, and then we can scrape the turkite in. Uh, excellent, excellent wear surfaces on the cast iron, the turkite, um, really better than cast iron on cast iron. So that'll be an improvement to the machine that we make as we do that. That'll all be coming up probably next in this series. Um, but for now, we got our scraping done on the ways. Again, very happy with how this has turned out. Guys, with that, that's going to be a wrap. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Those thumbs up and comments, greatly appreciated. Hit that bell icon up there to get notifications when new videos are posted. And a big, huge thank you out there to all the supporters of the site on Patreon, PayPal, etc. cetera. Uh, really could not do everything we do. You guys help out tremendously in helping to be able to finance the, what has to be done to restore these old machines so that I can share this content with you on, on uh, keeping old machinery alive. 
With that, guys, we're going to sign off, and we'll catch you on the next video again. Thanks for watching.